Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Another antenna video, another antenna experiment. So uh, it's spring coming into, or you know, early summer. This is the season where six meters tends to open up. And uh, I wanted to build a an antenna for six meters. Now, um, back when I built the Yagi, I had people hopping in in the comments. When I built the Yagi for two, I had people hopping in in the comments and saying, build a six meter beam. Huh, I'd love to, <laughs> but I don't have the room. Uh, people had, people forget that I live in an RV. I have to carry absolutely everything I own inside of a box that's 25 feet long by 8 feet wide by 10 feet tall. And that includes, you know, things like my sink and refrigerator, bathroom, bedroom, uh, clothes, tools, test equipment, um, everything. Uh, <laughs> including all the projects and equipment I build. So I just don't have the room to build big antennas and then carry them with me when I move around. So for six meters, I'm going to have to go with a dipole. Um, sure, I could build a squalo. Um, I've seen or talked to people with squalos. I've observed performance on squalos, and they work. Uh, but I don't know. I think a dipole might work better, especially if it's a cage dipole. So that's what I'm going to build. Now, what's a cage dipole, you might wonder, for the newer hams anyway? Um, well, there's a well-known effect with antennas where the larger the diameter of the conductor that you're using on the antenna, the broader the bandwidth. Um, and also, if you make it physically larger, that's capturing more area of energy that's coming through, so it's probably going to perform a little bit better. Now, cage dipoles um, are a way to get around a problem. Uh, obviously, if you take a wire uh, and you make it, you know, six inches wide, it's going to be a, probably a pretty broad bandwidth, but it's also going to be extremely heavy. So you can get the same effect by using multiple wires and spreading them out. So they're all tied together electrically, right? Uh, like here is a, a homebrew cage dipole image that I stole off the web. If it's your image, um, cool antenna dude. Uh, anyway, uh, a lot of people will do something like this where they'll just take multiple wires and they'll have little separators to hold them apart and uh, get it up that way. And then you've got a lighter antenna. I mean, it's still heavier than a regular dipole, uh, but you're going to get that larger diameter effect, that broader bandwidth, uh, without the weight. However, they still are kind of wieldy. I mean, they're, they, you know, they're complicated, they're, um, you gotta, you gotta really work on them to make sure that the wind's not going to snarl them up, uh, and so on for HF anyway. Uh, commercially, the idea has been used in antenna installations. I found at least a couple of pictures here that I can show you one of, uh, commercial antennas using the cage dipole idea to increase bandwidth. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a neat idea and I've never built one and I want to find out how much the bandwidth increases. So, how am I going to make my cage dipole for six meters? Well, I'm going to use PVC. And oh, before you head to the comments again, I know, I know PVC's dielectric can have a little bit of an effect on an antenna. You know, if you built a twin lead J pole and you stick it inside a PVC, which I've done, it shifts the tuning because of the dielectric constant of the PVC. You just compensate. And yeah, I know PVC degrades over time, but you know, I'm mobile. My antennas go up and come down. They're not up there. It's not going to be like a 10-year installation. And even if it uh, was and the PVC got old and cracked, you just buy more and replace it. I mean, it's cheap. Okay, that out of the way. Um, I've decided to use PVC. I had a 10-foot length of half-inch PVC left over from when I built the 2-meter uh, Yagi, so that's what I used. Uh, I took a center T piece and I mounted a BNC connector on it and brought wires up to screws out on the flanges of the piece. And those screws will actually go through the PVC legs to secure them in place and allow me to easily take it apart, take one leg off for storage when I travel. See, that's how I'm going to get around that. Uh, you can see the picture here of the centerpiece uh, where I put the BNC connector on it. It was a little tricky soldering that one wire to the centerpiece in there, 
but I was real careful to keep my soldering iron from touching the plastic and I was able to um, get it soldered on. So that gave me my centerpiece. And then I cut two lengths of the half inch PVC to about 53 inches each. And then I needed to test it. Uh, I needed to put up a regular dipole and test it first to give myself a baseline for comparison. So here you can see I've got the uh, regular dipole up there. It's just two pieces of 18 gauge wire going to the uh, connection points and running along the PVC. And if we look at a VNA sweep of it here, um, you can see that the bandwidth, if I go from the points where it's at two to one SWR, is about 2.6 megahertz. So that would pretty nearly cover the six meter band in and of itself. You know, up in those higher frequencies, uh, antennas tend to be a little bit broader than, do, than they do when you get down and lower HF frequencies. And um, you know how uh, modeling and uh, all the literature says that a dipole in free space will have an impedance of 74 ohms at the center? Well, if we look back at this, di at this sweep, you can see at the center uh, low point, we were at 73.8 ohms. 74 ohms, right? So there you go. I've got the dipole up high enough that it's more than a wavelength off the ground, so it's basically in free space. And we see that, uh, yeah, about 74 ohms, just like the uh, models predict, so that's cool. So now I've got my baseline for a regular dipole and a bandwidth of about 2.6 megahertz. Now to build the cage dipole. So I'm going to use window line. Um, I still have a lot of it left over from other projects, and so why not? What I did was I mounted the window line to either side of each of the legs, and then I tied the ends of the wires together so that the window line pieces are all tied together, acting like one big conductor, separated out physically in a four-way cage. You see, so there's my cage dipole. Um, I put that up on the mast after it was completed, and uh, I uh, swept it, and if we look at that sweep, uh, we'll see that, yes, indeed, it is wider. From the two to one points, we see a bandwidth of 4.6 megahertz, so much wider. In fact, 1.77 times the bandwidth, one and three quarters the bandwidth that we got with the regular dipole, so there's our cage effect. It's, it's definitely a broader bandwidth antenna. And I'm sure some of you are wondering by the sweep why I don't trim the antenna so that the bottom of the curve is in the center of the band. Well, I 95% uh, or more of the time that I'm on six meters, I'm down at the bottom of the band on the single side band or CW or digital portion. Um, and it's a dipole. It's going to be horizontal. You know, that's, that's what it's built for. So I've got it trimmed to where the lowest point is right there at the bottom end of the band where I tend to operate. Uh, so, so we have done two things here. One, we have, uh, well, we've done one thing for sure. Um, we have shown that absolutely a cage dipole presents a wider bandwidth. And in the case of six meters, this one is giving us uh, 1.77 times more bandwidth, or 1.77 times the bandwidth, 77% more bandwidth than uh, the regular dipole. Uh, so yeah, it works. And it looks pretty good up there on the mast, I think. Uh, to mount it to the mast, I, uh, I took one of these uh, three-quarter inch PVC tees and I just cut the top half of it off so it was just a, a half moon shape. And I just clamped that on the side of the, of the mast. And then I got a little short section coming out to the antenna. Here's a picture of it. Uh, you can see how I've got it mounted up there on the mast. And it's held up quite well through a pretty hefty windstorm we had yesterday. Uh, so that's good. Usually with antennas, uh, the next thing I would do after putting it up is do a whisper beacon just to see what the footprint of the antenna is. However, on six meters, there's hardly anybody listening. Here's a whisper map showing all of the stations that are monitoring six meters in the U.S. at that time. And you can see very few. So whisper was out. Uh, I, I thought, well, I'll film a contact or two. <laughs> yeah, six meters, you got to wait for an opening. And most of the time, this is all you hear. Nothing. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time, a uh, few days this week, listening to the static on six meters, hoping for an opening. Uh, it was a, I had plenty of time. Uh, my back, I, I tore a disc in my back early in the week. And so 
I was pretty much laid up most of the week and could hardly uh, hardly do anything. And this antenna build should have taken less than a day. It took me about four days because I could only work on it a little bit at the time. Uh, but I did have one contact. I didn't have the camera out because it was late. It was a local guy anyway, so no big deal. Um, but I did hear a few things yesterday. We had a pretty high solar wind in a G1 magnetic, geomagnetic storm. And usually when you get those geomagnetic storms, you get some of that sporadic E opening going on and six meters will tend to open up a little bit. So there's a, there's a thing to watch for. If we're having a solar storm, uh, spend a little time listening on six meters, maybe call CQ a few times because there might be an opening. But yesterday we had uh, over 600 on the uh, solar wind, a G1 level storm, and I was listening in the morning. And for about 20 minutes, I heard an occasional blip of a signal, just a fraction of a word. You know, there'd be static and you might hear uh, just, just a little fade up and fade down. One time I heard three words. I heard about 400 watts and it was gone. You know, so it almost opened up yesterday, just little fragments. Um, but uh, I'm ready now for when it does open. I've got a good antenna and it definitely should do quite well once we get an opening on six. So that's what I've been up to. Um, I'm going to do a quick blog write up on the antenna and put this diagram um, instruction sheet, or whatever you want to call it, up there. So the link to that will be in the video description below if you want to go and read through the blog and download the design um, image. Uh, it'll be there in the blog. So uh, there you go. So that's my six meter cage dipole. I think I'm going to be happy with it once six opens up. Um, I definitely, oh, I did hear um, one signal on 50.191, which is a common signal or frequency for EME or moon bounce. And uh, yesterday I heard a signal there. It was, it was pretty steady. It was a four tone frequency shift keyed signal that was very, very slow. I mean, you could hear the tones. You could hear it go bee, woo, wee, woo, you know, like that slow. Um, but I couldn't figure out what mode it was. I thought it was JT65 that they like to use or JT65A, but I couldn't decode it. So I have no idea who that station was. If uh, one of you guys know what that mode is that they like to use that uses a four tone um, FSK uh, format or modulation, uh, let me know in the comments because I want to decode that if I hear him again. I, I did hear him a couple of days briefly and I'd like to decode that and see who that is and where they are. Uh, so anyway, that's my six meter cage dipole. Um, if you want to build one, uh, follow the blog to get the design specs. It's real simple though. It's super simple. You cut four lengths of window line, about 52 inches. Um, mount them on opposite sides of the PVC pipe, you know, so you've got that square shape to the wires, you know, they're separated, the wires are separated like that, you know, they're a simple cage. Uh, tie the ends together with a wire, like I, I did here, here's the ends, um, they're like this, they're tied together. Uh, at the center part, uh, tie them together as well, so that all four wires are acting as one conductor. And uh, that's it, just uh, to a connector to your coax. Uh, you could put a ballon in there. Um, I didn't have any cores that were good for 50 megahertz or the, you know, up in, the, in that frequency range, so I couldn't wind one, but that's okay. Um, it's just a bog standard coax connected dipole and it works as you'd expect. And uh, I get an SWR of 1.42 to one at the lowest point, which is fine for operating um, so yeah, I guess I don't know what else I can say about it. Uh, okay, so that's that. Um, my six meter cage dipole. I uh, hope you found that interesting and we'll see you in the next video. CQ, CQ, CQ. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ6. This is Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey. Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey near Quartzsite, Arizona calling CQ and standing by. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. 
Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.